Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. Now how everybody be do this wonderful morning? It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you. and pleasant morning brothers and sisters in Christ and welcome to another edition of morning prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is Friday the 24th day of November. Let me tell you something right. November is finished you know. Hmm. One more week in November we are done. I don't understand where the time went. Outside a blue gray sky with some white shifting clouds, it looks like it's going to be a very warm day here in Dangriga. I do hope it's a beautiful morning where you are as well. We're going to kick things off this morning with this one entitled, With the Lord Begin Thy Task. Let's have a listen. With the Lord begin thy task. Jesus will direct it, for his aid and counsel ask, Jesus will perfect it. Every morn with Jesus rise, and when day is ended, in his name then close thine eyes, be to him commanded. Let each day begin with prayer, praise and adoration. On the Lord cast every care, he is thy salvation. Morning, evening, and at night, Jesus will be tempter's might, with his presence cheer thee. With thy Savior at thy side, foes need not among thee. In his promises confide, and no ills can harm thee. All thy trust to thou repose, in the mighty Master, who in wisdom truly knows how to stand disaster. If thy task be thus begun, with the Savior's blessing, safely then thy course 
tears will run, not thy soul distressing. Good will follow everywhere, while thou here must wander. Thou at last the joy will share in the mansions yonder. Thus, Lord Jesus, every task be to thee commanded. May thy will be done, I ask, until life is ended. Jesus, in thy name begun, be the day's endeavor. Grant that it may well be done, to thy praise forever. One there done for us by the Lutheran Quartet, that one entitled, With the Lord Begin Thy Task. Let's continue then getting our words here up on screen for today, November the 24th in 2023. And we continue with our opening sentence from Psalm number 43, verse 3. Send out your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Using versicle 1 on page 35, if you are following along in your books of common prayer. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our prayer of intent. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle the Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100. It can be found on page 37 in your books of common prayer. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with a song. Know that the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us. We are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from gener generation to generation. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thoughts, word or deed, we may have committed. Things that might have been displeasing to God. Things that might have been unfair to our neighbors and things perhaps that might have been unjust even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 102, and leading us in the psalm this morning is Miss Aria Sylvester and Mr. Fenton Ross. Let's have a listen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 102. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me. When I call, make haste to answer me. For my days drift away like smoke, and my bones are hot as burning coals. My heart is smitten like grass and withered, so that I forget to eat my bread. Because of the voice of my groaning, I am but skins and bones. I have become like a vulture in the wilderness, like an owl among the ruins. I lie awake and groan. 
I am like a sparrow, lonely on a housetop. My enemies revile me all day long. And those who scoff at me have taken an oath against me. Because of your indignation and wrath, you have lifted me up and thrown me away. My days pass away like a shadow and I wither like the grass. But you, O oh Lord, endure forever and your name from age to age. You will rise and have compassion on Zion. For it is time to have mercy upon her. Indeed, the appointed time has come. For your servants love her rubble and are moved to pity even for her dust. The, na the nation shall fear your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord will build up Zion, and his glory will appear. He will look with favor on the prayer of the homeless. He will not despise their plea. Let this be written for a future generation, so that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord. For the Lord looked down from his holy place on high. From the heavens he beheld the earth, that he might hear the groan of the captive, and set free those condemned to die, that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord, and his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples are gathered together, and the kingdoms also, to serve the Lord. He has brought down my strength before my time. He has shortened the number of my days. And I said, O oh my God, do not take me away in the midst of my days. Your years endure throughout all generations. In the beginning, O oh Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you will endure. They all shall wear out like a garment. As clothing, you will change them, and they shall be changed. But you are always the same, and your years will never end. The children of your servants shall continue, and their offspring shall stand fast in your sight. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. We want to thank Miss Aria and Mr. Fenton for leading us in the reading for this morning, and they are reading in honor of the birthday of Miss Amari Sylvester, which is tomorrow. We continue then with our second canticle for today, the canticle number 11, the third song of Isaiah. Arise. Shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, deep darkness covers the land, and deep gloom enshrouds the people. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day and by night. You will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Our Bible lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 through to 20. And leading us in the reading this morning is the birthday girl herself, Miss Amaris Sylvester. Let's have a listen. The Old Testament is taken from Matthew chapter 18, verses 10 to 20. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you in heaven, their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. 
What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, that so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Mr. Maris for leading us in the Bible reading for this morning. And we want to wish her a happy and blessed birthday. Our Bible reading then, a continuation of our look at Matthew chapter 18. And this time we're at verse 10 to 20. Yesterday, we looked at verses 1 through to 9. And we saw Jesus's um, advice and admonition, actually. You know what? If I could call it a threat, I would, but it wasn't. We heard Jesus telling us, that in order for us to be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven, we must be like little children. And we also heard what happens to those who create stumbling blocks for those who are little children. And we are saying whether the little children was literally in terms of small children being not properly brought up in the faith or whether little children spoke to the, the beginning of a faith journey even for an adult. What was important is that we are not supposed to be stumbling blocks that cause them to not be able to develop in their faith and in their relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And the beginning of our reading this morning, in it we hear another reference of our responsibility to guard God's little ones. And you see it there in verse 10, take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you in heaven, their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. Now, it's interesting because well, God's mind and eye is always on his people, but it makes it sound like if it is always definitely on his little ones. And we do well to treat them with love and respect because they are highly regarded by God. God protects the humble and the innocent is something that we say here in Belize. And the reference to guardian angels really is what I'm hearing in that verse right there from Matthew 18. I tell you in heaven, their angels. So the little ones have their angels. And this is often taken as a reference to guardian angels. And we certainly do have angels watching over us, ministering to us. Hebrews chapter 1, I believe it is, somewhere between verses 8 and, and 15, tells us that, yes? But of course, there is no need to limit what is being said here to just specifically guardian angels. It's just angels in, in general. general. And then it goes on to tell us in verse 12, because you'll notice verse 11 isn't there. It goes from verse 10 straight to verse 12. You see that? And that's just the way it's set up in the Bible. Verse 11 talks about, does he not leave the 99 for the one? And then it goes on to further expound it expound it in terms of giving the example of a shepherd with a hundred sheep and we know this one very well hmm? the shepherd with the hundred sheep if one of them has gone astray does he not leave the 99 on the mountain and go in search for the one that goes astray and the story is a demonstration of the value that god places on each of us as individuals the shepherd even though he has 99 other sheep still still 
leaves the 99 together because there is strength in numbers and goes and search for the one that went astray because the one that went astray is in far more danger than the 99 that are gathered together in unity. Hmm? And Jesus is saying, yes, we are supposed to reflect the same care for each individual member of the family of God. The parable is similar yet slightly different from the lost sheep recorded in Luke chapter 15, verse 3 to 7. Yes, the evidence suggests that they are similar. Both were taught by Jesus, but both had different aims. Here, Jesus emphasizes the love and care that we should have for all persons in the Christian community. Yes, and the thing is, we are often tempted to despise the one, you know, because it is only one. Yes, if we despise the one who is not doing what we believe they should be doing, if we despise the one that doesn't look like us or sound like us, it doesn't seem dangerous because it is only one. Yeah, but it is very dangerous because if we are willing to do it to one, we will be willing to do it to all. And the parable is telling us that the one that seemingly is going astray is just as important as the 99 that seem to be keeping the faith. We can't despise the one because that one has gone astray. And <laughs> it's not necessarily to say that we will condone the action of the one. Hmm? Let's make that clear. The one that is gone astray is not championed for being bold to go astray. The one that is gone astray is not heralded for being individualistic and going on their own. Mm -mm. Notice what happens to the one that goes astray. The one that goes astray is sought after, is found, and is returned to the fold. So it says, when the shepherd finds the sheep that has gone astray, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. He brings it back to the fold. And it tells us, so it will be, so it is not the will of our Father in heaven, that one of these little ones should be lost. What does it show us? It shows us the character of God's love, being like that of the care that a shepherd gives for a lost sheep. It's an individual love. His love for us is based individually on who we are. Yes? He's not going to give me out of Carol's love. Mm -mm. My love for God and God's love for me is a personal thing. And what? God's love is patient. Even when I go astray, he still seeks me out. So it's a seeking love, a patient love that doesn't just get frustrated and say, you know what, tired of deal with her, make it go. Mm -mm. And it's a rejoicing love. For when I come back to realizing that I'm in need of God's love and I'm rejoined with the fold, that love rejoices over me. And it's a protecting love. It went out to search for me because the, the attitudes out there are completely different and contrary to the love of God. You know? And it's not the will of your father who is in heaven that anyone should be lost. And that should be an assurance for us. Hmm? That the truth is, we could trust in God's mercy. We could trust in his love. We could have faith in that he wants what is best for us. He's not going to lead us astray in order for us to become lost. Yes? And then it switches. The reading switches. And begins to deal with sins, it seems, or trials and tribulations, discrepancies in the kingdom of heaven. Hmm? If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. Hmm. Interesting. When people do something wrong, it is instinctively our habit to call them out on it right there and then, no matter who is around. This is telling us we need to be discreet. If a member of the church sins against you, it is essential that we go to the offending party first. It doesn't tell us go griping and gossiping about others. Hmm? Especially under the guise of sharing a prayer request or seeking counsel. Hmm? It tells us to go and speak to the offending party directly. In other words, correct people in privacy. Now, it doesn't guarantee that when you try to correct people in privacy, that they will accept what you are bringing. It tells us if the member listens to you, 
you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, then you know what step comes next. Right? It's interesting because Jesus is not saying in the fellowship, in the membership of the church, there will never be confrontation. He's not saying that life as members of the church is going to be perfect and everybody will always get along. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, if the member of the church offends you, sins against you, hmm, we should bear with one another and be long-suffering towards each other, bringing it to their attention individually. If they ignore you, if they do not heed what you are saying, hmm, if they hear you, you are being the brother. Hmm? In two ways. The problem is clear up and the person realizes that they were wrong in some way and you were right in some way. Problem resolved, but the two of you are rejoined as brothers and that wrong is probably not going to be committed again and you eliminate the idea of gossip and half side of the disputes being spilled. Yes? Mm -hmm. No. If they don't agree with you, you take it one or two more. The circle of people in the situation only becomes wider as the offending party refuses to listen. If there is a stubborn, unrepentant attitude, then you have to bring it to more than one. It is true that the one or two more, after hearing both sides of the story, may resolve the issue by assigning responsibility differently, yes, that they might be the ones who are the mediators in the thing. But the goal of even adding the one or two in circumstances of confrontation is to be for the restoration of relationships between the two. It is not just for the hearing and sharing of people's business. The goal is for the return of the offending party to come back into a state of right. Hmm? And why do you need to? Because that is witness. Words and circumstances must be corroborated by evidence of two or three witnesses. And even so, it doesn't guarantee us that in the presence of two or three witnesses, the person will seem to change or come to an acknowledge if they did wrong or what they did wrong. Because it tells us in verse 17, if the member refuses to listen to them, the two or three, then tell it to the church. So you see the hierarchy here being followed. First, confront the person individually by themselves. If they are not listening, then bring them in the presence of two or three. If they are not listening, then bring it to the church. And sadly, if the offender still refuses to listen to the church, then such a one is to be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Now that kind of worried me because it's saying that if the offending party wishes not to change, then you treat them the way you would treat those considered outcasts. Gentiles and tax collectors were not welcome. Hmm? The unrepentant person, we are told, should be treated just as we would treat them. But how should we treat them? Hmm? When Jesus spoke of Gentiles and tax collectors, while the society considered them outcasts, how did Jesus treat them? Jesus didn't treat Gentiles and tax collectors like second class citizens. He treated them with the same amount of respect, the same amount of love, and the same amount of caring as he did everybody else. You remember all the healings he did and then couldn't do for his own people, but were was able to do for the Gentiles? Hmm? Treating them, let one be to you, let such a one be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector, doesn't mean you stop loving them, doesn't mean you stop trying. It means that you exercise great love with the goal of bringing about a full repentance and reconciliation. Because that's what Jesus did. When Jesus ministered to the Gentiles and to the tax collectors, Matthew himself being the best example, he didn't go, oh, you're a Gentile, you can't come. Oh, you're a tax collector, you can't come. Oh, you're living wrong, you can't be a part of us. No. 
he showed them great love and great mercy. And it was out of the love and the mercy he showed them that they were able to come to repentance and join along with him. So don't take it that when it says they should be treated as Gentile or tax collectors, that it's saying that you should outcast them from out of the fellowship. If they refuse to be a part of the fellowship, that becomes their choice. Your responsibility is still to love and care for all people. Hmm? And even if the matter can't be resolved, in a sense, if they are refusing to be in full standing and in full participation in the body of Christ, then while they are unrepentant, they might excuse themselves from church, but that doesn't mean we stop loving them. And it goes on to tell us that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And if the process of correcting that we just hear is done with humility and according to the word, it is binding in the eyes of God. Even if the unrepentant one goes to another church, hmm? that's not for us. Let them go to another church. Let them continue their fellowship with God. Even if not in our circles, I tell people all the time, would be nice if you come to worship with me. But I don't mind that you don't worship with me. I just want you to be able to be in a place of worship. Find yourself a Bible-based, Christ-believing church and go and worship there. Because at the end of the day, whether you attended my church or somebody else's church is not going to be valid on judgment. It is whether or not you worshipped God and forged a relationship with him through Jesus Christ. Hmm? If the unrepentant, as the reading calls them, doesn't want to be eye to eye with you as a member of your church, that's okay. Let them at least find peace with their God. Hmm? And what is bound on earth is bound in heaven. What is loose on earth is loose in heaven. Make sure that you understand that this is a call for forgiveness. Because even if the offending party will not apologize, that does not limit you from still forgiving. Know that someone's acceptance of your forgiveness has nothing to do with you being willing to forgive. And when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. It doesn't say forgive us our sins as they accept the forgiveness we are offering. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because forgiveness is more about your sanity and your well-being than it is about putting people right. When I forgive you, it is a sense of freedom for me to not continue to hold malice against anybody, to not continue to hold on to the hurt caused by anybody, to release that person and more so to release me from the bond and the stronghold that that person has over me. Even though you are the offended, when you forgive those who have offended you, the sense of release that comes is for you, not for them. They will have to find forgiveness for themselves. If they don't accept your forgiveness, that's on them. What you lose is loose. What you continue to buy is bonded. Mm -hmm. That's a way we have to look at forgiveness. Forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for us. And I love how it ends. It talks of the power and the blessing in fellowship that is denied to the unrepentant in some sense, but it talks of the power and the blessing in fellowship that can be used and is available for the benefit of those who are united. If two of you agree on earth, there is real power in agreement in prayer. You know? There is real power in agreement in the presence of Jesus. And that's what the unrepentant is missing out on because they are no longer in agreement with us. But it tells us, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Hmm? We must take advantage of the power of agreement. Hmm? And this is Levitical, Levitical principle here. Leviticus chapter 25, uh, 26, I believe it is. 
where where five sets of a hundred enemies were sent to fight, but a hundred set of against a hundred set of ten thousand enemies. Yes, it was twenty to a hundred, and the twenty win because the twenty were united in the name of Yahweh. There is real power, exponential power in the agreement of people in prayer over something. When we agree in prayer over something, it is heard. And make no mistake, perhaps the exact petition that we offer may not apparently be answered, but remember that God hears the prayers that we offer. The answer might not look like what you want, but that does not mean he is deaf. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And Jesus here indicates that meetings of his people, huh? meetings of full power and authority, are connected to heaven. And you don't need a large gathering of a thousand. It could be just two or three who are genuinely communing in his name. Hmm? I tell people all the time, I rather have ten people who are truly committed to Christ and the work of the church than a hundred people who are just taking up space. I'm not about numbers. I'm about effectiveness for the kingdom of God. Hmm? Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. I don't need ten thousand. I don't need a thousand. I don't need a hundred. If I have ten, two or three, who are sincerely gathered, and that's why I give God thanks for you. Because the two or three of us that gather in the morning, gather in sincerity, we gather in truth to glorify God, to learn from his word. And hopefully it affects our actions when we go out into the world. And I honestly believe that the two or three of us gathered here, yes, there is God in the midst of us, each and every day. And what a blessing that is. Hmm? An ability to cheer the faithful few. An ability for the faithful few to continue to do for the kingdom of God. Large numbers are not essential. The rank of people, not essential. A particular place and a particular time, not essential. A faith and a willingness of the few to gather in sincerity and truth for the kingdom of God. That is what is necessary. Meeting in Jesus' name. That is what is most essential. I give God thanks for the opportunity he has given us to experience him in our midst as we gather two or three of us. And I pray that out of the experience that we have through this gathering, we will share the experience of Christ with others. Amen. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage seed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. 
govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we can never hope in vain. Our first collet for today is the collet for Pentecost Papa 20. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all Holy Scripture to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Together we say a call it for peace. Eternal God, in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love, so mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one Father, to whom be dominion and glory, now and forever. Amen. Today in our world cycle of prayer, we remember and pray for the people of Palestine, and in our ecumenical cycle of prayer, we pray for our sisters and brothers who are members of the working group of Mennonite congregations in Germany. At this time, we turn to our personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we want to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Miss Vanessa Clare and Miss Angela Hall. Celebrating a birthday today is Mr. Ambrose Peter, Mr. Clive Thomas, Mr. Amari Sylvester, Miss Tasha Casimiro, Miss Diana Azueta, Miss Ashanti Lang, Miss Amy Smith, and Mr. Lionel Velasquez. Celebrating a birthday tomorrow is Reverend Kadisha Smart, Reverend Roland Mark, Mr. Carlos Acosta and Mr. Brian Grant. To all those celebrating birthdays, we pray God's blessings upon you. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to remember and give God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine. Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss Kim. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Tess, Miss Aislinn, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, and Miss Derla. We remember and pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Vanancia, and Miss Molly. We pray for Miss Betty, Miss Martha, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica. Miss LaShawn, Miss Alta, Miss Teresa, Miss Amy, Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlette, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, and Miss Faith. We remember and pray for Miss Priscilla, Miss Jean, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delvereen, Miss Lorraine, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, and Miss Evelyn. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for Miss Verolyn, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alaire, Miss Nina, Miss Leonor, Miss Gladys, Miss Robin, Miss Patricia, and Miss Salome. We pray for Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa T, Miss Uliche, Miss Joe, Miss Ismay, Miss Marcia, Miss Joyce, and Miss Toya. We pray for Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kelia, Miss Velina, Reverend Ilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Miss Navia, Miss Eleanor, Miss Carolyn, Miss Gretel, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Brenda G, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominique, Reverend Linda, Miss Shell Madine, Miss Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Maisie, Miss Zinzi, Miss Suzette, Miss Kimberly, Miss Shanice, Miss Julianne, Miss Dillis, Miss Tessa, Miss Megan, and Miss Charlene. In our prayers, we remember and pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Z and Mr. Larry, Mr. Henrik, 
Mr. Wilfrid, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Ian, Mr. Belhem, Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Mr. Clement, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Carlos, Mr. Pablo, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Sean, Father Constancio, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kirk, Sir Colville, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Severanis, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Ambrose, and the Bishop Nicasio. We remember and pray for Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Bishop Curry, Father Mark, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Chris, Mr. Trevor, Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Bishop Wright, Mr. Richard, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Glenn, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kieran, Mr. Marlon, Mr. Albert, Mr. Paul, Mr. Donald, and Mr. Ted. We remember and pray for healing for persons who have recently been infected with COVID-19, those recovering from post-COVID syndrome, persons in their various forms of isolation, and those who care for them. We give God thanks for the availability of a vaccine, even as we continue to pray for the containment and the elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray for all of our doctors, our nurses, our ambulance drivers, our cooks, our cleaners, our athletes, our pharmacists, our radiologists, our lab technicians, those that work in administrative offices. We remember and pray especially for doctors Hidalgo, Molina, Monguia, Arnold, Manzanero, Ariaga, Shogreen, Ken, Arana, Joseph, Eck, Lawrence, Sosa, Young, and Cuellar. We pray for Nurse McKin, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, Nurse Lino, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Ashley, Nurse Cadogan, Nurse Aurel, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Aaron, and Nurse Alejandra. In our prayers, we remember and pray for those who are unable to pray for themselves. We pray together, saying, Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray for the family of Mr. Aaron Callis, the family of Mr. Peter Servio, the family of Mr. Elbert Flowers, the family of Miss Margaret Enriquez, the family of Mr. Mike Weller, the family of Mr. Godwin Moody, the family of Mr. Wilford Pascasio, the family of Miss Mary Lou Stacy, the family of Miss Loretta Wright, and the family of Mr. Glenn Phillip. For all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, we pray that God's comfort and peace will be upon you during this time of bereavement, and we pray for return and rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Elisa Randolph, Angel Page, Karina, Ria, Tammy, Ashley, Garrett, Freedom, Courtney, Kai, Jamal, Arian, Akua, and Tiffany. We pray for our loved ones in the military, Praying for Jason, Emil, Charles S., Derek, Prince, Charles C., Candy, Christopher, Sam, Gavin, and Isha. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those who are considered most vulnerable in our society. For the poor, for the needy, for the elderly, for persons with pre-existing health conditions, for persons battling with autoimmune illnesses, for persons struggling with HIV and AIDS, for persons battling cancer, for persons battling diseases such as lupus, we continue to remember and pray for God's healing graces to be upon you. We remember and pray for those who are struggling with mental health challenges, those who are struggling with substance abuse issues and their related ailments. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for our security forces. We pray for our government. We remember and pray for our churches and our church leadership. We pray for the private sector and for all non-governmental organizations involved in any form of humanitarian. 
we continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community, those affected by the ravages of war and civil unrest, and those affected by the ravages of natural disaster. For all persons in their various stages of recovery, we pray for God's provision for them, even as we pray for protection for ourselves and our region against the ravages of civil unrest and natural disaster. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayer. We conclude our intercession by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the words of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever, we will be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ our Lord. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in your presence, as well as in the presence of Almighty God. Mm -hmm. I want to thank those of you who joined me last evening for Bible study. We had a wonderful time and a beautiful discussion discussing the final segment of baptism as the gateway to Holy Communion. It was a wonderful discussion and I'd like to thank those of you who were with us for that discussion. I want to remind you this morning of what our broadcast schedule is like for today. Following this broadcast, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. We invite you to join us for any or all of these services as you are available. And don't be bothered if you missed it at its scheduled broadcast time. You can always revisit the Facebook pages of the Churches of the Anglican Diocese of Belize in order to catch a recap of these services. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace to dismissal and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with one entitled, Blessed are the pure in hearts. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful Friday, a blessed and beautiful weekend. I look forward to seeing you on Monday, same place, same time. Until then, God bless and bye for now.
Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So face a challenging day, before He take me away, me hand to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another. Another beautiful day I had to get up and pray